We came to Dell Tech World here in Las Vegas to learn more about the next era of AI, the era of enterprise adoption. At the Playmaker AI booth, we got a glimpse of what that looks like. I didn't just get coached by AI, I got roasted. Who doesn't love that? Who doesn't love that? We grab all these frames, we break it down into dense captioning, summarize it quickly, and then use some pretty hefty prompt engineering to rate you on things like footwork and accuracy and velocity. And if you think this tech is just for sports, think again. One of my favorites is healthcare. Because if you think about the probably thousands, millions of hours of surgery that have been recorded around the world and the specific ways you need to maybe suture something shut, understanding how the best surgeons in the world do that is now accessible to anybody. This is where AI gets real, taking elite human skill, encoding it into software and deploying it anywhere it's needed, from the operating room to the production floor. But how exactly do you make that a reality? AI is evolving fast, from generative models that create content to inference engines delivering real-time insights and now to AI agents. These agents, or advanced software programs, are built to automate routine operations in a business. At Dell Tech World, we saw the way they're integrated onto an AI PC. Our PCs, we never want them to have issues, but if they do, we want to add an extra layer of protection where we can have an agentic workflow run on the PCs. Watch how a group of agents work together to address software issues on the device. With the detector agent, it will identify, hey, at this top level issue, I have a detection. In this case, we see that there's a T0599 thermal heat issue that was identified based on all the telemetry that we further investigated into. And then we will build out our recommender agent, which will define a plan on different recommendations that we should do to help remediate the problem. And the next phase of innovation? When digital agents combine with physical AI. Robotic systems that can take action in the real world. Something like this. So what we're doing here is we're using an autonomous AI agent that's actually running without GPUs. And that AI agent is monitoring this server rack right here. So I'm just gonna come over here and I'm gonna tamper with this rack a little bit. And you're gonna see this data center AI agent is going to get a signal via iDRAC that there's an issue detected on the server that it's open. And it's going to tell the humanoid robot to go inspect the server and figure out, hey, what's the problem that we, that we just uh, occurred? Conducting a visual inspection and running diagnostics. All right, so he's sending back the visual inspection it just conducted to the AI agent. So humanoid robot working on behalf of the AI agent right here, right now. But building that kind of system isn't easy. Enterprises face old infrastructure, silo data, privacy concerns, and cybersecurity risks. At Dell Tech World, we learned about the latest solutions that address those issues. Let's start with the biggest of them all. Data is the enterprise's most valuable asset and one of its hardest to manage. AI is a data problem. It really is. The most important piece of technology for AI was the cheap hard drive. Before that, we had data in filing cabinets. Filing cabinets weren't going to get the job done for Christopher Sullivan, the Director of Research and Academic Computing at Oregon State University's College of Earth, Ocean, and Atmospheric Sciences. Sullivan needs to carry out real-time analysis for his research on plankton. These are tiny organisms that drift in oceans, seas, and freshwater. They're the foundation of the aquatic food chain and play a major role in Earth's oxygen and carbon cycles. Changes in plankton populations can reveal shifts in ocean water, which is why you'll often find Sullivan out on the water aboard a $150 million research vessel, collecting nearly 100 terabytes of data every couple of days. And that's just from one experiment. Typically, 12 to 15 are happening at the same time. Plankton's microscopic, so it's not easy to see. And so we actually have to move the boat around potentially where the plankton are. So if I'm not able to do the work at edge on the ship, I might come back with bad data, and that's no good, because then I've stored a whole bunch of data that's meaningless. So clearly, flash storage was a game changer for AI, but it's really just a piece of the data puzzle. Because before you can store it, you've got to ask. What data do you have? Is it cleansed? Is it labeled? And can you get to all of it before we start feeding it to the models? That's where the Dell AI factory with NVIDIA comes in. A set of integrated solutions that include hardware, software, and services, 
all built for the full AI life cycle, from training to deployment. It's fully customizable, designed to help enterprises start quickly and scale. Oregon State is one of more than 3,000 customers who've tapped into the AI factory since it launched last year. And this year, Dell expanded the factory with new solutions like the Dell AI Data Platform, built to tackle the exact data bottlenecks we've been talking about. The Dell AI Data Platform is really how we've combined our expertise on data and our data storage into a more approachable offering for customers so that they can get their data house in order, right? Because we don't have the data in order, we're doing, we're gonna get bad results. Clearly, Dell's aiming to be a one-stop shop for enterprise AI, and the numbers back it up. In its latest earnings call, Dell projected its AI server business will hit at least $15 billion this year. Those servers are going to next-gen data centers, some wired with up to 27,000 miles of cabling. At that scale, I bet you'll see a lot more robots moving around. Now imagine the cost and time it takes to build all that. Dell says the AI factory can cut setup time by up to 86% compared to traditional methods. And running AI workloads on-prem, that could be up to 62% cheaper than using the public cloud, and often more secure. And what about legacy systems? The factory helps to modernize existing infrastructure, swapping out outdated servers, adopting liquid cooling, breaking down data silos, and integrating with what's already in place. It's all about making the leap from legacy to AI ready smoother. And we got to see what's possible when that leap actually happens. Come with us onto the show floor. So this is a Dell AI factory with NVIDIA half rack here. So it's live running on the show floor. We have it in a specialized case and it's powering agentic AI demos, to digital assistance, and a code generation demo. So it is a good example of how an organization can get started with that smaller form factor. But in some cases, enterprises want AI to run directly on the device for privacy, speed, or situations where there's no internet. That's where the AI PC comes in. It's been a game changer for Michael Catron, who's deaf and relies on on on-device AI for real-time communication. He works at OmniBridge, the company behind ASL translation software that bridges the gap between spoken and sign language. In this demo, we saw how the software runs locally on a Dell AI PC, using Andy's Dell's digital assistant as the interface. Andy's powered by large language models, allowing her to understand natural language and respond in real time. The webcam captures sign language, translates it into English text, and Andy delivers a response, making the conversation two-way, even without internet. The great thing is I can sign in my native language. I don't have to write back and forth. You get to speak in English. You don't have to write back and forth and then passing my phone back between us, you know, it can be awkward. So what a day we had here at Dell Tech World. We got to see innovations that helped the disabled, that spotted plankton in the waters, some innovation helping us to become better baseball players. Think about what's possible in the enterprise as agents enter the manufacturing sites. This is all to come, but a lot of big questions that still need to be answered. Well, stay tuned with me right here as I dive into those questions here and Connected. Till next time, I'm Diana Blast.